It's day 17 of designing an Animal Crossing island in just 30 days using only DIYs. Yesterday we tried to summon a frog and we decorated our entire campsite. It's the 30 day DIY island. I thought we'd start our day by taking a captain boat tour. And the reason is because it seems like the jury is still out on whether or not we can find crops on captain islands without actually unlocking the cooking skill. Uh, I seem to get comments going in both directions, and I want to believe everybody. I could probably look it up, but that's silly. So we're just gonna try this ourselves. Now that I have some points, there's also no real downside to doing this too. It is once again an island with vines and palm trees, which is fine, love the vines. Uh, yeah, there's no downside. We get vines, we get a recipe. That recipe, again, is not going to be a cooking recipe, which is awesome. And this is, because I'm not using Happy Home, the only way I can get vines. So if I ever want to make the giant vine item, I'm going to need these. Uh, I also recently did one of these and unlocked the vine stool. So, yeah, a lot of vine unlocks, which is pretty great. They're, uh, they're an awesome set of items. Our beach DIY is the glowing moss wreath. So we'll hang out here for a few minutes. I'll, I'll pick up some shrubs and a few things, and I will explain what it is I would like to get done today. I'm thinking today would be a really good day to start decorating around our big villager neighborhood that has that kind of like boardwalk in front of it by the river. I've had some ideas now for a while as to how that one could look, and it is right by the campsite too, so <laughs> I'm kind of wondering if all the designing we'll do is gonna kind of like spread. Now the campsite is the first thing we've decorated, and we're just gonna slowly spread out from there to other parts of the island. We'll do the villager neighborhood, we'll do the museum. I don't know, I don't know what order I'm gonna do things. Honestly, I'm just kind of going off my inspiration, like in the moment. So right now, I am feeling pretty inspired by the walkway we've created in front of everyone's house, and I want to start working on that. In the background, I've been trying to also make more and more time to unlock extra DIYs too. So I played a little bit after the recording yesterday and managed to find a couple more DIYs. So we are very slowly filling out our collection, and it, this is kind of a balancing act, right? Like. We need to try at this point to build something every day if we want to hope to finish this on time. And then we need to keep unlocking DIYs before we run out of time. And it's just this constant tug of war, chicken and the egg situation. And uh, it's, it's going to be really interesting as we get into the second half of this challenge where things are going to go. Where are we going to be by day 20, which is just a few days away. But thinking about all this is ruining the relaxing vibes of my Catton Island getaway here, so <laughs> let me just finish gathering up some supplies. For the time being, a lot of my extra shrub and plant storage is going to be over here, and we're just gonna like kind of pick up shrubs as we complete builds or want to complete builds, and we need a little bit more nature. I love that we get so many of these, what are they called, plumeria bushes? I, I think these are excellent. I loved when they were added to the game. And every time almost I go to a Captain Island, these are what I get. So we're probably gonna make really good use of these as time goes on. For today's build to work, we're going to need to finally start to unlock some of the DIYs that exist only in the Nook Stop. And there are a lot of really good DIYs in here that are gonna help a ton. Some of my favorites include the fountain, which has a number of different customizations. The silo for when we want to make like a farm area. The brick well. And of course, the stall. I'm going to buy two or three of these different recipes though. The stall being the premier thing that we're going to be using along this kind of boardwalk area. Because I wanted to create like a busy looking area that looks like a lot of different small businesses exist, right? So the stall is always a, like a really good one. So the recipes I settled on were the stall, the destination signpost, the drinking fountain, and the donation box. The drinking fountain, of course, is something we need to make the big fountain. So if I ever want the big fountain, I'm gonna need to learn the drinking fountain. I have like a few thousand points left over and we're just gonna kind of leave it at that for now. Speaking of DIYs, I still need to find the DIYs that we just get every day. So Stinky is crafting. A bamboo drum. I don't know if I currently have any bamboo, but I'd really like some for some of this build that we're gonna be doing today. I feel like it would fit in nicely. Luckily for us, I did buy turnips a couple times, which means Daisy May would have sent us some bamboo shoots. Now, if the peaches were allowed, I guess the bamboo shoots are also allowed, so I will be planting those. The alternative would be just going to different Nook Miles Islands and finding some bamboo trees, but 
since we planted the peaches that kind of messed things up in my head. So the ooh, wooden mosaic wall. So the rules now are it's okay to receive those types of things from NPCs in the mail. Which I wasn't going to originally play it that way, but you, you know, the peaches just got too controversial. It it kind of it messed up the whole challenge. Another thing we need to do today is buy our first staircase, and this staircase is going to be used out in front of where my house is going to go. I'll place down that first staircase right here, and I didn't bring as much money as I thought I did, so I'll just put in this for now. <laughs> Oops, and we'll we'll need to go ahead and pay off the rest later. I do have some, my my fruit grown in today, so we can go ahead and harvest this stuff. I guess I picked up all the fruit. I managed to dig up all the fossils. And I even found the spot for our money tree for the day, but I have zero bells on me. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix up these fossils and start selling stuff. Lathers only wants two of these today. That's good for me. And we will take home 58,800 bells. I didn't realize how many distractions I would have today <laughs> when trying to do this build, but I keep finding things that I just should probably touch up because they're starting to bug me. Like this path, for example. There's a few paths that need to be kind of fixed up. This one by Stinky's house slash the information center, for example. And then also this path that's going over to my house, for example. But all right, we are now ready to craft. And there's some pretty cool things here. We have a whole bunch of DIYs that uh, we just unlocked. And what I would like to do first, I think, is make some rope fence. We're going to be putting that all along the boardwalk. I'm also gonna play around with some cardboard box recipes. If you remember, we are allowed to grab cardboard boxes from the recycling bin, but we are not allowed to just decorate with cardboard boxes. We have to craft them into something. I went ahead and crafted a bunch of stuff, and as I start to place down my fences, it is worth noting that this build might be one that we kind of continue to build on as time goes by, because we need to unlock more and more recipes. For example, I want to create a stall that specializes in selling like fish, but I don't really have any fish DIYs, and it also feels like it's against the rules to catch fish and then use their tanks as decorations. They're not DIYs, and I know I've made a lot of exceptions thus far, but before I just go ahead and do that, I want to challenge myself to see if there's another way I can do it. We got the fish crate recipe at some point. Maybe just like the books, we can buy some fish crates and we can decorate with the stacks of them. That that could work pretty well. But of course, we will just kind of figure it out as we go. I do think the rope fence here is a really nice touch and it's going to already make the area feel nice and full. Looking at it in the distance, this definitely feels like the right call. I stopped right about there, but looks like I could have kept going. Our bridge is gonna go here eventually. Next, we need to start customizing the look of specific stalls. So uh, one of these is going to be one that sells like fish and stuff, I think. So waves is a good pattern to put on the awning. And then I think we'll go with a white stall for this one. And I think out of all the default combos, this is one of my favorites right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this too. The stalls themselves, I always envisioned going between the houses. So we'll put one here. And uh, this is actually the one I want on the other side. We'll put the lighter one here. And I'm not quite sure how far it's gonna stick out yet. I also know I'm gonna put some stuff behind it. But for now, let's just kind of put it right there off the path. And we're gonna put the other one right here. Again, just off the path for now. But I have a feeling I'm gonna end up pulling these out. For this stall, I envision something a little bit different. This one's gonna specialize in pottery. So we have the modeling clay, the classic pitcher. We have this little pot right here. And honestly, as I'm doing this, I do think that everyone when everything should maybe come out just a little bit. Yeah, have it hanging on the path just a little. That feels better to me. I'm also gonna need to pull these out more to get back there because I was just climbing back there with a ladder realizing, oh, I'm gonna get stuck. But uh, I put a cardboard chair in the back and then I'm thinking we're gonna put maybe another pot back there. I, maybe some other stuff too along the way, but what I was thinking is we kind of place a pot right there next to the cardboard box and just kind of make it look like there's some extra stuff happening in the background. And that means the other pot can go right here. And for now, uh, I'll call our pottery stall done, but yeah, there's there's a lot more we can do with something like this. Hopefully we get some different items that, uh, that work back here. In fact, I did have one more idea. The, this box shaped seat could be the perfect item to place our pot upon. Kind of like that. Yeah, I think that's something. All right, so yeah, little pottery stall. Maybe a bit of a work in progress, but still pretty cool. And it's giving this area that busy vibe that I'm going for. Another item I really want over here is the destination signpost. But as you can see, because it's so big, it's difficult to place down in a way that doesn't block the path entirely. I did manage to shove it against this house, and we can still walk in front of it, which is good. 
But yeah, it, it definitely adds something to this area. Maybe this is not the right customization, but I chose that color scheme because of this stall right here. I kind of thought they tied in together. And I thought the blue of this roof would work with the blue on the sign and stuff, but I don't know. I kind of I kind of wish we had the Happy Home customizations because I don't love this, the color schemes of these houses for this build, for this entire area. It's fine. It's just not ideal. I don't know. I'll have to think about it. Anyway, for now, behind this stall, I did grab a few barrels, so I thought it'd be cool to maybe put just a couple of those uh, tucked in the back here. And, you know, I don't know, fish in a barrel? Is that... <laughs> Is that what I'm trying to say? But I don't know, in lieu of having like any actual items that make sense, I thought this was maybe a good strategy. To give this build a little something, I'm gonna go ahead and put a garbage plant right there. I I don't think this is a fish stall, but it's definitely a stall that sells something one day maybe. I think another thing that makes sense for now is putting these shrubs somewhere next to these stairs, probably pushed up against the cliffs. I think little touches like this help a space a lot start to come together. And then of course, I do have a drinking fountain, which could go, you know, right out here somewhere. Just, this is a busy area with a lot of people kind of walking around and shopping. So I thought this would be a nice little item to kind of put over here and people can kind of visit when they need a break. Something that would definitely help is giving our visitors a place to kind of sit and relax. So. I've created a couple of different benches and I wanna see how each of these is gonna look. I also know that having them on the path like this really limits the space in which you can walk. I wish you could get these benches closer to the fences, but that's just not how it works. But we have this log bench. I also have a, uh, I think it's called the iron garden bench. It's metal. I'm not sure which one of these to use or where to put it. Looking at them side by side though, next to this big path here, I am leaning more towards the log bench I think that one just kind of looks better, matches the feel of this area a little bit better. This is great for like a park or something, and I'm probably gonna be building a park at some point anyway, or it could go in front of the museum. But yeah, let's go with this for now. I also have an extra barrel on me at the moment. I think it can go right there, kind of tucked up behind this house, because now it looks like this particular house is the one in charge of this stall here. I don't know, I, I think just stuff like this works. Obviously this area is a bit awkward, Right now, we need something else here to kind of start to transition it from boardwalk area to nature path that's going to eventually lead to Eric's house. And maybe that's the thing. We will leave this here for now as a reminder, but this is probably not the final placement. What I need to do is get a path going from about here up to Eric's and then we can decorate accordingly. I also have for no particular reason a donation box. And I don't know why this is here or what it's implying, but I have something in front of the stall over there. So I might as well put something <laughs> in front of this stall it's it's really bright, so I don't know if I'm gonna use this color scheme for it or if this is the placement for it that it needs, but I don't know, I, I just like the idea of this stall not really having any particular purpose and then having a donation box in front of it as if to say, hey, like if you give me some money, maybe I can open a stall one day. Will it sell plants? Will it sell whiskey? I don't know, just give me money. I'm also curious to see what it feels like to have a little bit of fencing right up on top of these holes between the houses. I don't want to put fence all along this because this is already kind of a narrow path. But if we go down here, yeah, it definitely feels like it needs a different fence. But having a fence up there between the two houses sounds like a good plan. I was thinking maybe this cobblestone fence would work since the cobblestone path, but I don't really like this. From down here, it doesn't look too bad, but it's just kind of weird. What if we tried another log bench over here? I'm finding it a little bit difficult to center this. <laughs> But it, it's, it does serve the purpose I want it to serve, uh, which is it keeps people from falling right into this pit down here unless they sit on the bench and get a little comfortable and lean back. But that's their problem. I just want to see if it looks good. And from down here, it definitely looks good. I, I actually like that a lot. And because it's kind of between the gaps of the houses, it still feels relatively easy to walk along the path. I think for now, I'm gonna leave it alone. Similar to the other bench we put down there, it's just kind of a reminder that, hey, we wanted something here, maybe that something is a bench. In case you're wondering, by the way, those nook miles in the corner were for customizing furniture and it's another thousand. So we're back up to 8,000 nook miles today which is great. I've decided to try another customization for the destination signpost and uh, this one's just called old <laughs> and I like it. I think it's a little more neutral than the one we had before and fits better with the houses. I don't feel like it fits better with the theme of the area, 
but it looks better with the houses and everything around it. So we are keeping that one. I thought it was time to come home and maybe put a few things away. Why is that? Well, it's because I gotta be honest with you, I feel like today has been a bit of a disaster. I found myself pacing around this build quite a bit trying to figure out what's up. I'm placing all these different items down and individually I like all these things, but collectively it all just kind of feels like a mess. I mean, our campsite came out so good, but it honestly feels like this build isn't living up to that same standard. So what's the pro- oh. So what's the problem? Obviously it's just a complete lack of good, compelling DIYs. So I've decided it's time to regroup. If we want our Riverside Boardwalk to look good, it's time to cut our losses for today and do some of the biggest time jumps we've ever done. Tomorrow, we're going into the future and we'll be looking for a whole bunch of DIYs that should give us a big kick in the pants when it comes to unlocking more potential for our builds.